Moon Knight. My favorite part is this back and forth, whether or not you know if what you're seeing is actually happening or in the mind of Stephen Grant or Mark Spector. We don't even know yet really the specifics, and that's the beauty of it. However, it is paying tribute to a superb run that you shouldn't read yet if you haven't and you're watching Moon Knight. Shout out to Jem Mint. It's your boy, Jem Mint. Love the guy. And there's been a lot of other homies in the community, other channels. You know, shout out Eris Quinones, who in anticipation of watching Moon Knight, knowing the community is going to watch Moon Knight, are recommending this book. I'm of the, I'm of the opinion that you should not read this book before the show. Yes. Don't read this comic until after you watch the show. It's a nice little addendum there at the end. Someone's it's important for out. the clip bait, comic Just fam. Don't read this comic. Comic Tom says, don't read this comic. Someone's going to someone's gonna cut that out. Context is what matters here. I have also heard a lot of good things about this run. Uh, I'm a fan of Greg Smallwood, the guy who does the art in here. He's doing Human Target right now for DC with Tom King, and that's my first exposure to Greg Smallwood. And somebody in the comments in another video was like, you got to check out his work on Moon Knight. And then I was just thinking like, hey, I'll go, yeah, I'll get around to that. But it wasn't until we decided to talk about it for this show that I actually sat down and, and read some of this run. And it is really good. But I do agree with Tom. It's it's so close to the show that I think it might skew your uh, expectations. I think that you will appreciate it more after you experience what's happening on Disney+. Plus. Because on Disney+, Plus, it's still a superhero show. And I was chatting with um, someone about this recently that it's interesting to see how many individuals are fans of superhero shows and movies that weren't prior to as big of a medium as it's become in a franchise. And, and obviously there's been a lot of successful movies and there's different genres within those movies that make it appealing for different right. you know, audiences. However, there is definitely a carrying over of, yeah, it's still superhero-y. It's a little campy, you know, it's definitely appealing to kids a little bit. And it makes sense to me why some people are like, yeah, I can dig a good Thor movie, but you know, I'm not going to watch, you know, Eternals. And I understand right. why they wouldn't, because they're not like that diehard. But maybe they get in because Shang-Chi is so, you know, they're hearing such grave reviews, or they hear that Black Panther is a masterpiece, right? So they'll get into that, but maybe they don't want to watch Iron Man 3 because they don't really care. Um, You'd be wrong, by yeah, the way. Iron Man 3 is amazing. Yeah. I, will st I will stand by that. One of my favorites. Um, not the time that it came out, but I digress. So that superhero aspect is still here in Moon Knight, but the way that it's really complemented, and, 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 and aside from the maturity level that we've already discussed is the other aspect of this narrative that it's less superhero -y and more psychological. Can you go into that? Uh, sure. <laughs> I will try. That is uh, the best part, at least, that I'm seeing about the show. And I, to be upfront, the only Moon Knight comics I have read are is the current run happening right now by Jed McKay. That's like 10 issues in or something. It's my first time reading Moon Knight, so this is my second Moon Knight comic. I don't have a whole lot of other... Moon Knight experience beyond the show and this current series. So I don't know exactly how psychological other parts of Moon Knight get, but I love the fact that there is... I'm having to really struggle and think about like moments from these issues that we read that have fighting in them, like combat. Talk about the creative team. The, uh, the creative team. Jeff Lemire. Uh, so good. It. Yes, one of, one of the best writers working right now. Uh, I also really, really love the pencils here by Greg Smallwood. Yeah, there's like straight up tributes to Bill S. in here. Um, it, it's drawn in such a manner that is kind of casting a haze over it. Because again, this is all a constant question of, is Moon Knight just a figment of his imagination? Also got to give props to Jordi Belair on colors. Outstanding color work. And you've been right. actually really honing in on color work for being someone who is such a fan of the writing I've been trying to appreciate the art more. I find that interesting that you are now gravitating towards more color work. I mean, there's a there's a lot of very talented colorists in, in this market. My favorite right now. is still Chris O'Halloran, which we've talked about before. Oh yeah, man, he's incredible. He's incredible. You can but tell being able to spot life. them, yeah, is is a, is an interesting uh, trait that I'm noticing. All right, so we also have a comic that complements this show very well. Very well. Because that other part of it, where I think that if we were to put it like, as a percentage. The psychological nature of Moon Knight on Disney Plus, let's just say it's a 50-50. It's superhero, but it's also half psychological. You're really like 
empathetic. You're really concerned about his well-being. It's less about the superhero nature and more about his him dealing with the superhero nature, right? In the Jeff Lemire run, it's like 90-10 leaning on the psychological, okay. less on the superhero. And that's why it's my opinion that this is better read after the show. And I'm only two episodes in, but I have a feeling that it's, the show isn't going to go as all in as Jeff Lemire does because let's just be real with the comic fam. When you and I decide to read a comic, we go through it all and we seldomly even cover more than one issue, but we read it all because we want to have a, the opinion solidified about the whole thing as as much as we can. We'll get caught up on a run, but maybe we'll talk, read about the first couple issues, right? Because we're trying to get you into reading it, you know, leave some meat on the bone as some people say. Jeff Lemire's run I started reading it and I had like other comics that I had to read okay. that night. You too? And I just put them aside okay. and kept going. And I, I knew we were only going to talk about volume one. And I knew we were probably only going to talk about the first two issues. And I read volume two as well. Same. So I felt like I, because I, I wanted to. It's, I'm so glad we did too because. And you did the same thing. Yes. That's what I'm talking like- <laughs> about. Not planned. He's like, I actually just, I read volume two as well. I'm like, dude, I read volume two as well too. I was up planning on reading 2 it. a.m. last night. Just like, I should go to bed. I really should go to bed. One more issue. I'm almost done with volume two. One more issue. And then I'll sleep. That is what Jeff Lemire does in this title. Because Moon Knight, although Ugh. has the memories, Mark Spector that is, has the memories of being a superhero, the fist of the moon god. He himself. Oh, okay. You got to zoom in on this one. I'll zoom in on it, man. Because this is, this is like, this is mental state, you know? He has these visions of himself. He has a vision of himself in the uh, Mr. Knight costume, mm-hmm. shout out, which we saw in episode two of the show. But he is in a mental institution. There's some like one flew over the cuckoo's nest stuff happening here. Absolutely. And the accomplishment of second guessing the readers over and over and over again is Something that I think is going to be homaged long-term. People are going to pay tribute to this in their own writing. I Low-key, you brought this comparison up, but I can't stop thinking about it. Scott Snyder basically did this type of narrative. In that yeah. Batman. Last, that Batman uh, book, uh, last uh, Night on Earth, I think, the apocalyptic one where you find out that Batman was really just in Arkham Asylum the whole time, and he's thinking all of his enemies are... He's thinking all of his doctors, people trying to help him, are actually like Two-Face and, and Poison Ivy and... and they clearly, like looking back and going back to this Moon Knight run, it, it's uh, almost a little shameful. <laughs> it's very, very close to what Jeff Lemire did several years before. But, you know, he's, he's definitely harnessing the, the good parts of it, which are exciting. And it's because it's so good. And the whole point of it, outside of trying to make the reader second guess, because, you know, what, what are comics really? You know, you're, you're checking out. You're checking out of your reality. You're getting a solid 15, 20, 30 minutes of just enjoying another universe, another world, right? Being visually stimulated with amazing art, a captivating narrative. Every page on, uh, in this book is you second guessing what you just read, what you just saw. It's like those moments in the Moon Knight show times 10. Yeah, it really is. And like going back, especially like you're saying, after watching the show, you get to go back and see they clearly uh, drew some stuff from here. They were inspired by some of the storytelling devices that Jeff Lemire and Greg Small would utilize in this run. It's as soon as you get to a point where you see, oh, wow, this actually Uh, could really make sense that Moon Knight is all in his head, that the individuals here are just like figures that he created narratives to that are fake. You know, we're looking at a notebook here, comic fam, for our audio listeners available on SoundCloud, Spotify, Stitcher, and iTunes pages, just little shots of the Jeff Lemire run. And we have Mark Spector looking at a notebook filled with pictures that he drew of Moon Knight himself as the superhero and diving into the lore and what he's been through and how he became the fist of the moon God vengeance, right? But he's seeing it from his seat as he's strapped in a chair because he's in a hospital. Is it real? His doctor is basically saying, you're not Moon Knight. You've never been Moon Knight. And this is, uh, you've been here since you were 12. And this uh, notebook is all just wild fantasies and visualizations of stuff that you say you've been doing, but it's all, it's all in your head. So much to the point that when he actually goes 
um, you know, superhero for the first time. He just grabs his clothing that he has, yeah. his scrubs, you know. He throws his bed sheet on. He he has like, I don't know, Captain Underpants mask on. <laughs> I don't know. He draws the moon symbol. And then you see what looks to be some type of like um like jackals. He's jackals, like envisioning yes. the orderlies at the hospital as like actual monsters. But you know that that's not actually what he's seeing. At least that is, it is we don't but that's the beauty that's the of question. this book. And Oh my god, I love this. Then you have shots like this. Ugh. We're we're looking at this full page wood. spread. So much detail and so much happening in such a little amount of space. Like so much is being communicated in every one of these circles. What he's seeing, the ass the ass that he's kicking all the way to the end where he's laying out the jackals on the ground and just taking them out. Night night. It's such an interesting way to depict a fight scene and a very atypical one, but I loved it. So here's a shot of New York. This reminded me of the, sh the ending scene from the last episode of Moon Knight where he opens the window and he's in Egypt and there's pyramids in the background all of a sudden. See what we're saying, comic fam? Just paying tribute in the best way possible. However, this is something that we have to remember is that Throughout this show, we may, we're not sure what we're going to see. We don't even know how much they're going to dive into the mental illness that he has. Maybe what we've seen, like, there's been a lot of reveals since even episode two. Yeah. You know, I'm sure there's going to be a back and forth. What is real? What is not? What I can say is that if you enjoy that aspect of Moon Knight, the Jeff Lemire run does that times 10x. I said that weird. Does it 10x. And it is glorious. It is fun. And by the time you get done with volume one, you think, again, for the upteenth time, I know what's going on. Jeff Lemire took a little bit of a break, comes back and does volume two. And on page one, you're going, he did it again. There's some feelings I got while reading the, uh, the issues in volume two that I have not really had in another comic book before. There's, there's some stuff that is done uh, artistically in a meta sense in that book that uh, are, are genius, and I hope to see them in other Moon Knight stories that I read. Comic fam, we are wanting to know your thoughts about Moon Knight. We want to know your thoughts about the show. Have you read Jeff Lemire's run? Do you agree with me? Do you think that the run is better read after what we're seeing on Disney Plus? Because it, in my opinion, will provide even more depth to the darker part of what I like most on the show. I also want people to throw out some other suggestions for cool Moon Knight runs to read because I'm still very much a beginner when it comes to, to Moon Knight. So I'm looking forward to that. Let me know. The book has hit 20 bucks. Let off the gas. Colin Fan, unless you're really gunning for some Jack for the goodness. $75 cover price on this. Don't overbid. But if somebody wants it, we got it. 